Hello, hello, and welcome back. If you're still watching, you're awesome because you're staying up late with us. Of course, if you're in Europe and you're staying up late, special shout out to them. Yeah, you're, you're a bit crazy, but we like you. You can stay. <laughs> you have cool voices like him. Ah, the Europeans <laughs> don't have that. They're like, I'm French. Why is this thing so hard? It's a great accent. I'm American, remember? It's all the same over there. Yeah. <laughs> you uncouth barbarian. <laughs> I know. All right, players are ready. Let's go ahead and jump into game number two. Of course, um, we're watching Last versus Killer. This yes. is... We're nearing the end again of day number two. We're trying to find out which guys are going to make it to the round of eight. Six have already been selected. No Zerg players yet. Can we get one in there with this match, Mr. Toltabisco? Well, it's a David versus Goliath story right now. There's no real doubt about that. Last currently up one game in this particular series. The other Zerg player fighting for his life against Polt right now and apparently doing pretty well for himself, but it's still to play for. I mean, it's, it's, you're playing against Polt. I mean, yeah. come on. It's, it's not going to be easy regardless no, of what happens. I mean, this is the guy that in Wings of Liberty was the last man standing in most of the major tournaments towards the end of that era. He was the only guy to consistently beat Zerg, and now he's got new toys to play with. He does. So it, it's an insane idea. However, there is still very much the possibility of the upset, and it could be brought to you by this guy. From Clarity Gaming in the Red Trunks playing Zerg to the southeast of Akalon Waste, it is Killer. And his opponent, who is in the top left of Akalon Waste, the Blue Terran player showing commanding drop play in game number one, showing off his strong macro style, representing Team STX coming all the way from Korea. He is last. There he is. But if he keeps playing like that, he's going to be first, which would be confusing because that's a player for LGIM. Korea, so stop it! Calm Good Lord. and smooth. He just he just doesn't care. Uh, oh. as, yep, yep. This is, I mean, this is pretty common on Akalon Waste, honestly. The proxy barracks play here, followed up there by the refinery on 12. So this is not as extreme as the 888. No. But it is a 12 barracks, 12 reactor, which 99.9% .9 of the time means it's going to be a proxy reaper, and that is annoying to deal with. That's a very fast drone scout, though. From, it is, uh, actually, and he's going to see... Look at that reaction. He's not even taking a hatchery, man. This is so smart. I love it. He's taking pool and gas, and he's not taking a hatchery as of yet. Now, the question is, even taking pool and gas, because that was still like on about 14 supplies. It's not like we're talking to 10 pool here. Sure. It's still going to be hard to deal with, especially with someone with last's micro. Yep. Now, this is actually really interesting because I'm wondering if Killer came into this game thinking his opponent would do a similar strategy to last uh, to the last game, the maybe. very fast command center, yeah. which something like this would theoretically work against. Um, now, maybe that, that drone was scouting, looking out for that. Maybe the second thing is looking out for, okay, is he taking a gas? Okay, it's a proxy yeah. reaper. Because it works, it works well against that as yeah. well. You know, last has to scout this out, and he's going to do it. So he needs to make a bunker right away at the top of his ramp, and then send that reaper straight back home uh, when he feels like it. But I, I don't think he's going to be in too much danger from whatever Killer has in store. Um, but anything can happen here, we'll see. Yeah, it doesn't seem all that likely, but the, the danger with the Proxy Reaper is that if a sudden surge of units comes out, then you're gonna have a hard time dealing with it because you can't really get back there. If you lose your Reapers and then the surge comes, you are in a lot of trouble. Usually the follow-up to this would be a fast factory producing Hellions to deal with that kind of counter pressure. But because it's proxy, it's still hard to deal with because you just you won't have the marine count on the ground. There's the factory I was talking about there to back this up. Yeah. But and again, last it doesn't seem like he's in too much danger because of that micro. It's just it's so strange not to see a Zerg take that expansion. Yeah, it it's is. so late. It's uh, going to be so delayed. Yeah, I, I mean, there's no Roach Warren down. There's no, no Bending. It's not like he's going for just a one base bust. Uh, and, and it sounds ridiculous, but we've seen them work. And it can, from time to time, be reasonable. But, oh, wow, that's a Supply Depot block as well. This is this is not looking good. Well, um, I'm wondering if Killer thought it would be the more committed version as, as far as the 888, but, you know, last did this, it wasn't a super early barracks, as you said before. He's putting a command center down uh, yeah. after this. He put, he's building plenty of SCVs, so he definitely has a follow-up plan. But the good news is for Killer, he's going to force that barracks to lift off. That barracks is going to be out of service for the near future. For a while, yeah. He's going to have speed links, so he's going to have map control in, in the early part of this game. He could theoretically delay that astral expansion from going down for at least a little bit. Um, but ultimately, you know, it is a bit of a sacrifice getting those early links out. He has to try it because look at the harvest. It's 22 to 17 right now. Yeah. Against a, a Terran player who's about to have two over commands. So 
Killer, I feel like he has to make something happen with these speedlings, or else he got him for... And the know. bunker's already there. Nice shutdown on the Reaper there with the speedling, of course. Yeah. It wasn't able to get to the bunker. Nice little surround. There's still a couple of Reapers in that bunker. There's another command center going down behind oh us. This God. is ridiculous. Killer got a second gas, by the way. Yeah, he did, which... You Are know, we going to see follow-up banelings? I, I, would, I mean, I can't see, What else would he follow up? I, I think mean, that'd be a spectacular choice, given the I state think, of the game I right think now. so. The risk is the widow mine. That's the real problem. Uh, I, and in fact, I mean, if you any guys who are watching both at the same time and also listening to both at the same time, which is skill, by the way, so well is. done to that. It's possible. You will know that with these widow mines in the engagements with Pult and Life are popping like 10 bailings at a time. They are incredibly effective because this, those, those units are so fragile, even the smaller splash will kill the banelings. A, a roach push, maybe, but he's going We're up to a lair really fast here. Layer, yeah. yeah, and mm -hmm. it's it's delayed. I mean, if he's gonna go muta, I guess that's okay because he can still get the gas down in a reasonable time. But he's it's... taking the gases at his natural very very fast. So yes, that makes he is. me think it's much more likely for that. It's pretty much got to be muta, play, hasn't yeah. it? I mean, he um, wouldn't take four gases that quickly on anything else unless it's something weird like swarm host. Sure, which um, is a possibility. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely keep an eye on that. Um, now, I love your point about the Widow Mines. It's such a great defensive tool. I love last decision. He knew his opponent was stolen base. He knew his, he's, he has a pretty secure lead after those openings. So he's in his mind, he's like, all right, what can kill me? And pretty much rea uh, an answer to everything that can kill him is, is, is the Widow Mine, essentially. So great decision there. And, and there we see the Spire out on the field um, as predicted. And the scan is just barely missing it. That's mm. crazy. Yeah, it's... But he sees the fast layer and he sees double gas, so he oh, might still know. Indeed. Well, it's... I, I just... I really want to say that I think Killer's got a shot here. It's just like, Last and his economy has been powering up quite nicely. Yeah. He has deflected aggression pretty well. He's lost like a Reaper and really nothing else. He's got three command centers up. Oh, three, wow. Yeah, I mean, he managed to do that. So he's using it to saturate, and now and then he'll take his third base when he feels safe to do so. Yeah. I can't imagine he'll want to take it too soon, especially if he finds out he's up against Mutalisk, because then it, defending against that's going to be really difficult, unless he builds a ton of missile turrets, which he's not, he's not going to do. No, it's yeah. that simple. So. I have a feeling that he'll probably stay on two bases for a little bit longer, especially when he sees the Mutalists coming out. And then he's going to go and get a little bit aggressive with these Hellions on the front here. Good creep spread, good amount of links to try and shut this down. Only four Hellions available here. Now, Killer needs to secure a third pretty fast after getting these Mutas on the field, because that's, that's going to be one of the purposes. The Mutas are, you know, one intention is, like, all right, let's get some worker harassment done. Well, the, the, the next one is, all right, let's keep our opponent at home so yes. he's not attacking me, right? Because yeah. theoretically, you know, the Seraph player would have to actually take time to start preparing for the Mutas, which gives time to get that third hatchery up really, really fast. You really want to focus on the drones during that, that moment in time, too, so you can start getting that economy up and running, mm. so you can start greeting the ferociousness of the generators. But look at that, two turrets in production. I think he knew about the Spider-Man. Even with two turrets, though, his marine count is really low. He's now building five at a time, so he's looking to try and catch up here. Stim is not done. That'll get plenty of marines out. Very yeah, fast. it will. And combat shield isn't done either. The widow mines are obviously a risk, but they're not placed in a position where they'd really be hitting mutalisks. But we'll see. I, it's, I still think there's, there's a lot of mutas. I mean, there are 11. That's yeah. a reasonable number. He could do something with this. And this third base has just gone down and is most likely just going to have to leave. Oh, he was just a too slow there for the denial oh, of the creep. That's that so huge. unfortunate. All now, right. All yeah. right, here comes an engagement. Yeah. Uh, he picks up a couple of Marines here wow. and there. Wow. And that's, I mean, that was He might get some SUVs here, here too. He's going to get a few, I think. Oh, uh, no, never mind. The Marines now stimming in. There are two medevacs, so he will be able to regenerate that health pretty easily. And it is, what we're going to see is a bit of back and forth, I think. These rocks aren't down. That's the really awkward thing here. We yeah. spotted this is going to be a nightmare. It's going to be incredibly hard to do. This base, it's probably not going to die, but no, it's, it's pretty true. close. He's moving it close in to trying his Marines at position. Those he wants Marines to desperately break those rocks down. This could die. Oh. This could die. Get it's it, on it's 103. Oh, my God, oh, it's down. Whoa. It's down. Killer with Hold a huge on. move. Hold the phones. That was a huge move. That was huge. The lack of the rocks there and the greedy expansion before taking the rocks down just cost him a command center. And now 12 drones are being powered behind this. And now I think, honestly, he could he could safely back off here and yeah. not really be too worried. Okay, the, 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 the main issue here might be the upgrades because we just saw last finish his 1-1. One -one. Yes. The 1-1 one -one is just now starting from killer and, and that's very important in the tbz matchup especially when it's marines versus banelings and marines versus lings your lings aren't going to do much if it's if it's zero zero lings versus one one marines now yeah 
He hasn't continued at last. Okay, just now continuing with the 2-2. So going to be retaining that upgrade advantage. Something we're definitely going to have to keep an eye on as this game goes along. Also, oh, what am I? Is in that natural expansion. Got to be careful about that. Yeah. But, um... Third Kill command center. Small, He's got to get that. Okay, it is being made in the main base. So Killer's going to try to focus on continuing to delay that as long as possible. Maybe even try to get a burrow. I don't know if he has burrow yet, but that'd be that'd be a cute move. I don't believe he does. Coming looking at 13 mutalisks here. And also looking to try and get plus one. It's going to take a little bit of time. The concern, I suppose, is what is... With the mutalisks on the field, yep. in theory, last shouldn't be able to successfully drop, especially with that overlord spread. That should be spread Great and point. intercepted. A big push could potentially work here, yes. but with home ground advantage and that creep spread, yes. it's going to peter out before it hits the natural. It's going to be bled down, and also it opens yourself up completely. What it was just like, what's going to happen? Oh. Takes a hit. That's one down with a little bit of damage done here. He, he's going to take a lot of SCVs here as well by the looks of it, and dips out before he takes too much of damage. Takes out the missile turret too. So he loses two mutalisks for some SCVs. It's, not, worth not, it. it's okay. You keep you remember he's still keeping his opponent's marines back home yeah. and not attacking him. And that's which gives the most him thing, right? Yeah, that's very important. But too. the problem is mutalisks can't be in two places at once, no. and the drop is coming in. Oh, but the interception could it. happen. It's going to take a while for the Zemitus to get back. However, Lings are very fast, so they can get right into the main base. Yep. Again, compared to the Rush Hydra we saw last game, not as mobile. So Lings are going to be there, going to greet this. But again, upgrade advantage is nice. non existent. They're both 1 1, so uh, Killer should be fine here. Yeah, he should be okay. Drop comes in, and shame he doesn't have any bailings to kind of shut that down. Yeah, and yeah. he also hasn't knocked down his rock, so he doesn't really have much access there. Yep. And in the meantime, there's a push coming in towards the third sword, posturing, but now turning back. And so far, it's been an interesting game of these guys just be kind of hitting each other with wooden swords up to this point. Yeah, um, a, a much closer game. It's last game. Now, the supply advantage still belongs to last. Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with his ridiculous macro. 2-2 uh, is about to finish as well, so he's still going to have that upgrade advantage. So I feel like Last is still going to have a slight advantage in this game. However, if Killer really fe really focuses on that creep spread, really keeps an eye on his opponent's medevacs, make sure his mutas are in the right position, and gets a beautiful engagement when Last inevitably pushes across the map with his marines, with his medevacs, and gets some solid connections with the bangs. That's how this game can turn around in, in favor of Killer. Mm, nice pick off of the Medivacs there, but I think he actually lost a good number of mutilists to make that happen. The cleanup's going to happen eventually here. He has no bandits. There we go. Yeah, he doesn't actually, which is really kind That's of odd. Really important upgrade yeah, right certainly. now. I think he lost about six mutilists in that engagement, so I don't think that was it was really worth going. He took two medivacs out for that, but I don't think that's a good trade. And you can see there's a big supply discrepancy here between Killer and Last. And now Last is going to start pushing across the map here. It's not isn't really timed with anything. He just wants to go and do some damage, and he can. Yeah. He's, he's I got mean, the he's, numbers he's, for it. He's, he's honestly approaching max. So Yeah, totally. Uh, a drilling claw is about to finish as well, so yeah. that's going to be really nice, especially against the mutas. Oh, yeah. Got to be careful with those mutas. Of course, as the game goes along, they're going to have less utility, mainly there to deny drops, take out medivacs when they can. But here comes the swarm of Marines. Look at that splitting from last. No creep is up here. So if you're going to try to engage with slow banelings, no, it's not going to work against a player like last. But here he goes, going to try to get us around with the Zerglings. There's the splitting from last, trying to stay away. And something killed all those banelings. I think that was the Widowmine yeah, shots. I believe so. This is what we were talking about earlier, wasn't it? Widowmines kill clumped up banelings. Using the drilling claws to tactically position widow mines as an anti-baneling defense is hugely effective, especially when the banelings don't have speed. Killer is trying to get a lot more units on the field. Ultralists are on the way as well, but this base is going to die pretty much almost certainly. And that dr the drones are going to be obliterated as no well. Mutalisks are rammed in the corner. No banelings here. There's a lot of oh, medivacs. Man. Look at this. These marines aren't going to oh, die. Total biscuit. Oh, that's horrible. Sorry. That was just that's a shooting gallery there yep. for last. Yep, he's inviting those units to attack him but as long as there's not Banelands, because that's not going to do anything whatsoever to all the Marines. GG, that's genetics. it. There's the GG last. Taking the 2-0 advantage here in this oh-so-important best of five, again, to decide who will advance on to the next round of the MLG Winter Championship event again. It's the last Zerg player, the last non-Korean. But speaking of last, last playing just so well so far. There's not many mistakes from last. I think, if anything, the only thing he's doing is maybe getting a little bit overconfident. And it cost him a command center that time. He he put the CC down very early, not being certain whether or not his opponent had muters, not being certain yep. how many muters he had, and not breaking the rocks down, which is risky. And he lost the CC, he got punished for it. Yep. The problem is that the muters after that weren't really able to do so much. And then the engagement started rolling across, and 
he had been constructing SCVs for a huge amount of time. He had been building up that work account, and even after losing the third, rebuilt another one, and then starts to create that stranglehold position. And mistakes were made by Killer. No Banelink speed, possibly one of the most crucial. Yeah, I mean, honestly, a lot of it started from that that opening. I mean, when you're when, whenever you make a decision to stay on one base for as long as Killer did. You, you have to make something you gotta happen. Do something. You, you have to do yeah. something because if you let that Terran player, uh, at last had three orbitals in how, how much, like very, yeah. very quickly. So, you know, that risk didn't end up paying off for Killer. So, you know, the good news for him is he's not out just yet, but no. he has a, a, an a uphill battle, an, an uphill battle ahead of him. He's got to win three games in a row, guys. We're going to find out if that happens. Cut up next. Stay tuned. You're watching Killer versus Last, the MLG 2013 Winter Championship.